Hi, I'm Catalina Maria Johnson on behalf of Beat Latino and Gozamos. I'm talking to Alex Marrero in Austin, Texas. Who? Hello, Alex. Hello. Um, who I had the chance to see along with many of the members of uh, Brownout in a new configuration, a new project, an amazing project, Brown Sabbath. <laughs> that does, as the name implies, uh, Black Sabbath tunes with a very, very uh, special twist. And there's um, Alex Marrero, he was the vocalist I saw. And tell me a little bit more about uh, your background and the project. I've been kind of looking you up and I saw Gandia, Nakia, and some other things. And I saw Mexico City, but you're kind of a mysterious force. And uh, the concert at Pachanga Latino Music Festival was amazing. Uh, it was really wonderful to see you guys. And everybody's like, who is that vocalist? Because most people know Brown Up, but uh, had not seen Brown Sabbath. So tell sure. us more, Alex. Well, I've been in Austin for about 20 years. I'm originally from Mexico City. Wow. And, um, Chilango. <laughs> Chilango. <laughs> Chilango, that's right. And um, I used to have a band. I met all the Brown Out guys. Uh, way back in the day when they were just starting out as Grupo Fantasma, I had a project that was starting at the same time called Gandaya, and we were, you know, peers, and we all came up at the same time. And then um, they did their brownout thing. I became mainly, Gandaya ceased to exist, and I became a freelance musician. I play a lot of drums, I play percussion, I sing, obviously, and... Um, I've, these guys are my friends. We've collaborated in multiple different musical settings in the past. And when I heard about this, they, Brownout was doing this residency at a club called Frank back in, I believe, November or October. And they had a different musical theme each week. And I got wind that they were going to do Black Sabbath, quote unquote, Brown Sabbath, uh, on one of those occasions. And I called them up. I was like, hey, can I sing a tune or two? And they were like, oh, I don't know. So many people have wanted to sing. We'll let you know. I'm like, okay, sure, no big deal. Just let me know. And it turned out that I ended up singing, and it went really well, and it kind of took a life of its own in a very strange and fascinating way. <laughs> I was speaking to you about it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Now, the single had you on uh, the wizard and then i think it's hand of doom on the other side another alex so i was that was i know a source of confusion yes. for some uh, journalists because i uh, it took me a while i was like wait a minute there's there's it's not a like a you know an alias it's two different alexes yeah it's kind um, of one of those random situations where two singers are involved in one project and they happen to have very similar names so alex mas is the lead singer of a very popular psych rock band called the black angels and he came in and was the guest on hand of doom and i was the guest on uh, the wizard and on the record i'm also on a song called nib and for the live performance i kind of became the the official live performance singer so wow now i yeah i noticed the uh when i looked you up a lot of percussion and drum references came up mm -hmm. and uh you were also saying that even from though you're from mexico city you told me tell me a little bit about me your musical background and uh, also your heritage is is a little wider than than mexico sure sure um <clears throat> my parents are cuban exiles so i grew up with in a very musical household there was always a lot of music around. I've been singing. Singing is the first thing I've ever done. I mean, when I was a two-year-old kid, I would sing for my sister. And, you know, so music was always present. And then I would come visit Austin because I had some siblings here. And I just fell in love with Austin and the vibrancy of the music scene. And I migrated here and just became completely absorbed in the scene here and just collaborating with people. And... I did explore my, my heritage quite a bit, and I started as a guitar player and uh, became a singer-songwriter. And then with my previous project, Gandaya, I was the band leader and the front man. And uh, we explored a lot of different sounds from Brazil, Cuba, uh, Africa. It was, a big, it was another big band like Fantasma. We were definitely uh, 
along the same lines. They were more cumbia, we were a little more Afro Afro-Cuban. But other than that, um, yeah, at one point I just felt I needed to submerge myself in my in my heritage and I just dug really deep into drums and percussion and a lot of people in town know me only as a drummer and percussionist. So it's interesting how fragmented sometimes scenes can be. Oh, some people know me as a singer and guitar player, and then some people only know me as a drummer. So maybe this will help bridge those gaps. Wow. Well, speaking of bridging gaps, it's kind of interesting. Uh, like you said, there's the, this project that's taken on a life of its own. Um, it's funny because, um, you know, of course, I'm familiar with Black Sabbath, but it's definitely not the music I would surround myself with. I mean, I would choose to, to put on every day. <laughs> but I love what Brown Sabbath is about. Uh, there's something there that, that just really is c capturing and compelling and uh, just potent, just sort of driving. So what, what is it? What do you think? You know, where did that where does that come from? That magic that that's really special, I think. I, think I mean, I think honestly, we have to give credit to the people that created that music because I think black I'm a huge Black Sabbath fan. Like I said, <laughs> when I heard they were gonna do that, I was like, I'm in, I need to be a part of this. <clears throat> I can tell. You I was like, this guy didn't learn all these songs just for this project. He knew no, them. He's been singing a along. See going on there, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So I think those songs are very strong and they're very funky on, a, on their own. A lot of people have misconceptions about what Black Sabbath is or they don't like their entire catalog. So I think the fact that we're grabbing some very iconic songs and giving them a Latin edge with horns and percussion, I think it kind of, like I said before, it bridges a gap between people who may not have heard this side of Black Sabbath and suddenly they're kind of like, well, that's actually pretty cool. And there's horns. And so. Yeah, I would have never added funky to, to Black Sabbath. <laughs> that's the thing. That's what a lot of people don't, don't realize is that Black Sabbath itself is very funky. Like their first two records aren't really the heavy metal that most people think it is. It's, it's funky blues rock. So. So I think it's a testament to the material and the approach with the arrangements. There's been some very creative ideas coming in and bringing in some uh, some Afrobeat and some reggae and some straight ahead funk. So I think people can really identify with all those things and just the energy of Brownout itself which has always been so so magical. It's got its own thing. So I think it's a great combination. And tell me, what, when you're putting together these arrangements and these uh, combos, I mean, is it like, uh, just tell me a little bit about the process. Are you just kind of coming together and then somebody throwing out ideas and jamming and seeing what works? Or is there is it a little more structured than that? I'm, I'm curious. It depends. Huh? It depends. Um, sometimes it'll just be a matter of jamming it out in the rehearsal room and everybody will throw out certain ideas. Other times... Uh, like NIB, for example, John Spies, the drummer, had come in with very strong ideas as to how he wanted to interpret it in the different sections. So it was pretty much everybody goes with usually what, what the best idea is and what feels best for the material. <clears throat> so we just practiced that and went in and tracked NIB, for example. We tracked it all live. I think the third take is the take that we all felt the band and the singer together, we were all happy with that take, which very rarely happens. Wow. So. Well, interesting when you uh, also thinking of bridging gaps. Uh, when I saw the, you guys at uh, Pachanga, one of the things that struck me was when I've seen Brown out before, they can, they can sometimes move into kind of like the jazz musician, like, you know, just sort of ignore the audience. It's like, we're just jamming here and having a wonderful time. And sometimes that's like, you know, there's not a lot of interaction with the audience. And you were like this bridge to the audience. It's like you could take it out there and communicate. And it was, and that was also really nice. I don't know if you felt that that you, you know, you're able to, to perform that role also. Uh, which well, that's is, my job. Yeah. That's I, I see that as my uh -huh. job. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I hadn't fronted a band full on in a while, and this allows me the opportunity to go really big. Like I saw this as, because the guys wanted me to play percussion on the songs that. Well, what if you play percussion on the ones you're not singing? And in my mind, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. And I was like, 
I just really want to front this. So I wanted to project as big of a persona as I could and really try and engage the audience. I'm not trying to be Ozzy Osbourne. We're not trying to be Black Sabbath. We're paying a tribute and interpreting what these masters did. So I'm coming at it from my own perspective and just trying to... I get to be a rock star on stage. So. A rock star and a poncho. Okay. <laughs> and a red, like, guayabera kind of... Top and bottom. There's some, there's some wardrobe change. <laughs> no, that was, I, I just thought that was, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, even though I know in, in the Austin heat, that was, that was a sacrifice to come it out It was with pretty that. brutal, but I mean, it was hot out there for the audience too. So yeah. we all, we all plowed through it together. Well, tell me, what, are you guys going to just focus on covers forever? Are, are you thinking of developing more material that I don't know if, or maybe you already have, you know, that's gonna, you know, rip, take off, you know, partir de, de lo de Black Sabbath, or what, what, what are you thinking of now for the future? Well, well, Brown Sabbath is its own entity, and they are gonna continue. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is gonna, we're gonna release this Brown Sabbath record, and it's Brown Sabbath, I mean, Brown Out presents Brown Sabbath. So we're going to ride this out and put out this record and see see how the response is. The response has been overwhelmingly positive so far. So we're going to ride this out um, for I don't know how long. And then Brown Out is, I know they're working on new material for a new record on their own. So that's going to continue to be an entity. I think this is just kind of a special treat that we will be able to do from time to time and I will continue on in my personal musical endeavors and Brownout will do the same and we'll converge whenever Brown Sabbath can uh, can melt some more faces. <laughs> well, we look forward to that. I hope you can melt some faces in Chicago in the near future. I know uh, I've been I'm, I'm hoping we I'm hoping we do. There's been some talk about Chicago and it's one of my favorite cities, so yeah, yeah. I look forward to coming out and and uh, rocking out with all the great fine folks in Chicago. Yeah, well, look forward to that and uh, hope it happens very soon. And congratulations. It's, uh, it's a great project. It's, there's something really magical about it. And it was great to experience it. And I hope, I hope a lot of people have a chance to check it out in the near Thanks, future, sir. either in recordings or, or live. Absolutely. Thanks, Alex. Thank Alex. you. Appreciate it. Alex Marrero, uh, now... Uh, singing as part of the Brown Out Presents Brown Sabbath project from Austin, Texas. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing a lot more. And the Brown Out, the, I think it's the Brown Out website that has the, uh, the links to the Brown Sabbath project also. Absolutely. Correct? But the record comes out June 24th. And, we are, and we're going out to the West Coast here next week. We're starting in L.A. on June 5th going our, to Las Vegas and then working our way up the coast to San Francisco. Uh, and hopefully we're, there's plans for an East Coast tour. Uh, and then you can stop in Chicago oh. on the way there yes. or back. Uh, well, that, that's definitely in the, in the works. Good, good, good. So hopefully we'll see each other in the fall. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Take Thank care. Thank you. Hasta luego.